Do you think they've actually said we're going to try to generate higher inflation or have they said we're going to tolerate higher inflation if it comes around? Well, that's a very good question. And, and certainly when you look at the breadth of monetary and fiscal policies on both fronts, they are trying to generate greater growth and higher inflation. I think I know there's a great inflation debate raging currently. I think near term you could get a push up in inflation, maybe from the supply shock that exists, maybe from the pool of liquidity that exists. And the Fed is telling us they'll look through that because when they look over the horizon, they do see bigger issues out there. Bob, do you think there's anything out there as far as you can see that generates high yields and breaks us out of this really tight trading range in 10-year treasuries? I don't think so. And, and again, you know, there are those short-term influences that, that could optically make inflation look high. I don't think the Fed would want to tolerate much higher yield, so they would step in and either increase the duration of their large-scale asset purchases or raise the amount of the large-scale asset purchases. And then once you get through that, then you're left with economies globally with trillions and trillions and trillions of debt layered on top of them. And how we pay that down is going to be the question for the next decade. It's going to take up a lot of economic output. Bob, we talked about that over the last decade, and then here we are again. Do you think there's something in the story that's changed? Well, I don't think so on the monetary side. And, and frankly, if I were Jay Powell at the press conference, I wouldn't wait around for Mike, McQue Mike McKee's question. I would say, there's the 2023 dots. I'll be back in three years. Drop the mic and walk out. This is all about fiscal policy going forward. And I think what we learned from the financial crisis is that austerity doesn't work. You can't shrink your way to growth. And we learned that in Europe. We learned that to some extent in the U.S. And we need that combination of very accommodative monetary policy, but we need something out of Washington. We need something out of Brussels. We need something out of Tokyo. You've got to put that money to work, Bob. The money in money market funds, you've talked about it a million times, five trillion sitting in there and some of it getting squeezed back out. Bob, where's it going? Look, we, like everyone who invests in bonds, are frustrated by the negative yields. We all wish yields would be far, far higher than they are and credit spreads would be wider. But that's not our reality. Our reality is we're here, there's a lot of money in money market funds and that money is becoming impatient. And as long as the Federal Reserve and other central banks are creating an environment that's very accommodative and they're telling us they're going to keep rates low for a very long period of time, that money will leak into credit. So there are things that we do like. We like the corporate bond market as a whole. We like actually the double B muni part of the market. And we also like local emerging market debt. So there are areas of the market um, where we still think it can generate much higher yield. So, Bob, you're willing to take some FX risk here. I am. Uh, the exceptionalism of the dollar, I know it, it's often talked about, seems to be fading in here. The interest rate differentials are gone. We looked at the difference between European investment grade credit and U.S. investment grade credit. On one hand, in the U.S., you get 2 percent on average. On the other hand, in Europe, you get six-tenths of a percent. European investors can buy U.S. investment grade credit and then hedge it back to euros, not take the currency risk. It only costs them three quarters of a percent. They're coming out with an average yield of one and a quarter percent. That's double the yield of the European market. So we are seeing the flows from Europe and Asia come into the U.S. market, and we are starting to see the currency hedges back to their base currency. Bob, let's build on that as a final question for you. People come to you with a large slice of money, a big chunk of money, and you help them put that to work. Can you just reveal, just give us some insight, just shine a light on those conversations you're having right now and how they've developed and evolved as the summer has grown older and we push into fall, autumn and the end of the year? So I, I just had one yesterday with our European client base, and I tell them to be realistic that yields are what they are. They're going to be here for an extended period of time. Pick your risk return part of the curve that you want to be on. Whatever market index 
sector you're going to invest in. I think over the next 12 months, you're going to generate the yield on that market or sector, plus a little bit in capital appreciation. I do think yields will drift lower from here over the next 12 months.